What is up YouTube? This is Chris coming back at you guys with my uh, level 1 deck profile for January 2019. I'm sorry, uh, I'm sorry, I'm like I've had this deck for a little over a year now. I really enjoy it. It's one of my favorite decks to play. Uh, sadly, Master Rule 4 has crippled it a lot. You can still play a Master Rule 4 if you wanted to. I'm sure it'd be easy. But, uh, I mean, I think Master Rule 3, the deck works better. But you can play it in Master Rule 4. It'd be fine. But anyway, uh, let's get on with the deck profile. So, I play... Three Mystic Piper. Mystic Piper is kind of like your, I would say, the go-to for the deck. It's kind of like how the deck was inspired, like how the deck came to be. It's just Mystic Piper. Mystic Piper says you contribute it once it's on the field, and you draw a card. And if the card you draw is a level one monster, then you get to draw again. Uh, you can only use that effect once per turn, so that sometimes don't forget that because that will pop up sometimes. But the card is great. It's essential. I think this card is like a ten dollar card right now. I think it'll just hold its value because you can build a deck around it. So. Uh, triple that triple guiding light guiding light just says if it's normal summon you can special summon a level 1 light monster back from your graveyard we do have a few of those targets but this helps you get piper back if you've already used it and then you can go into rank 1 play or you could just piper and use its effect so this card actually is pretty good comes in handy um, triple Valor. when I first made this deck I was only playing like one I think that was really stupid I think you gotta play Valor in here because of the guiding light and other things um, Valor is just a great card. Obviously, everyone should know what Valor does. Valor, you discard on your opponent's main phase, and you can uh, negate one of their monsters. Uh, and to search it, Triple Sage Eyes of Blue. Once again, a level 1 monster. It works for everything. Um, Sage just says when it's normal summon, you can add a level 1 Light Tuner from your deck to your hand. Accept itself, so basically you're just searching Valor off of that. Uh, it does have another effect dealing with Blue Eyes White Dragon, but I don't play Blue Eyes in here. I guess you could if you had the room and you thought it would be okay and you wouldn't draw it, but that's pretty much it. Um, and then Triple Kinkabayo. Kinkabayo basically does what Guiding Light does, except it does it with any level 1 monster. So it's actually pretty good. And then it just says, uh, I think it's like if this card is removed and the monster is still on the field, that, card will get, that monster will get removed instead. So make sure to not like... Don't do anything with this monster uh, unless you've done something with the monster it brings back. But this card has some good targets it could do. And then at the end phase, because it's a spirit, it'll return back to your hand. It can only be normal summon. This card cannot be special summon, just like all the other spirits. But Kinkabayo, all the cards I'm pretty much showing, I think, are essentials. Of, uh, they have to be run at three. Um, triple Evil Thorn. So Evil Thorn, I mean, once again, I don't really see a lot of level one decks playing it. I don't really know why. I mean, there aren't a whole lot of level one decks out there, to be fair. But... Uh, this card is an automatic rank one. You just, as long as you haven't drawn any other copies, you just tribute it. You burn your opponent for 300 random burn damage, because why the fuck not? And then you just summon two more copies in attack position, and then you can go into a rank one. So, that's pretty much all it's there for. Um, triple Steel Swarm Cell. Steel Swarm Cell is good because if you control no monsters, you can just special summon it. Uh, it can't be used for a tribute summon, and it can't be uh, synchro summoned with, but that's okay because you don't use it for that. Uh, key, th key thing to notice is it has zero defense points. Keep that in mind. But it's good for that. Uh, next, triple Jester Confit. Jester Confit just says you, if it's in your hand, you can just special summon it. The only caveat is uh, you can only control one Jester Confit at a time. But that's it. Its effects are something like during the, your opponent's end phase. If it's still on the field, you can like bounce a card back or something like that. It's kind of stupid. I don't think that will ever happen. But once again, zero defense. That works out great for us. So, uh, But Jester Confit, essential, three of Triple Battle Fader. Battle Fader just like makes your opponent trying to kill you that much more difficult when you can search out this card and have other things you can do with it. But, you know, if this card's still on the field, you can just overlay with it. So that's what comes in handy a lot. But once again, zero defense comes in handy. But Battle Fader, if anyone doesn't know, it uh, if your opponent declares a direct attack, you can just special summon it and negate the attack and end the battle phase. So. Uh, another key card for the deck that I hadn't seen anybody else do, but I kind of built my deck somewhat around this card is Raid Raptor Lastrix. So Lastrix has a long text, but basically what it does is you contribute it, summon any Raid Raptor XYZ from your extra deck that you want, it just comes out with no materials. And then after you've tributed, your opponent takes no more damage. So that's its kind of downside, but it's not really that big of a deal. So there's a key combo that I'll show later. It's not really a combo, it's just a basic play that you can do, but this card is busted in my opinion. Uh, triple Turbo Booster. This is like the only non lighter dark monster that we run. That's why, I mean, Chaos Monsters work in this deck. But Turbo Booster, uh, if you've already normal summoned this turn, you can just special summon them from your hand. 
Um, obviously, that's pretty easy because you're going to be doing it pretty much every turn. And then it has another effect that doesn't really come up a whole lot, but I believe it's... Can you shut up back there, please? I'm talking to the people right now. My bad. Alright, good. Yes, people, I am that big of an asshole, just so all of you know. <laughs> but Turbo Booster says that if, uh, if one of your monsters has battled already this turn... Whatever monster your opponent like battled with one of yours, you can tribute this card to blow that monster up. So that comes up every now and again if you like your opponent has a monster that you can't out, but it's whatever. Uh, triple uh, Blackluster Soldier. So BLS is like I think I mean I think it's the best Chaos monster. I tried running a few other ones, but I think he's just the best. Uh, hands down, he's the one you would always want. And at three. You're pretty much always going to have a light and a dark both in your graveyard that you don't care about. So he's a great card. And running him at three, your opponent gets tired of seeing this card almost every duel. So uh, he's a set. I think he's great at three. And he looks amazing. Um, okay, for the two ofs, I think we just won one card at two. But Relinquished. Uh, Relinquished, because it's easily searchable, it also has zero defense and a dark, so keep that in mind. But you can do a lot of cool things with it. The great thing about Relinquish, I mean, it's the fact that it's a level 1 monster and that you just need one other monster to do the tribute, so that's pretty great in and of itself. Relinquish has a great effect of being able to suck up your opponent's monster and equip it with it. Uh, you know, if your opponent would try to kill it in battle, the monster that it was equipped to dies instead. That's great. The thing people forget about Relinquished is that, you know, Thousand Eyes Restrict has the effect of, your, you know, it's the only thing that can attack and monsters can't change their battle positions. That's great and everything. This thing has the great effect of Whatever battle damage you would take from this card, your opponent also takes it, which Thousand Eyes Restrict does not have. But Relinquish, great card. I run it at two. I think two's all you need, but a great card. You can also bring it back with Kinky Bio, so keep that in mind. If you summon this card correctly, then you can just bring it back. Um, one Relinquish, this kind of goes with Relinquished, is that uh, this card says if it was tributed, you get to draw a card. So Relinquish is, like I think, the only way we have to tribute it. And if you're wondering like why like it's in here because that seems like it wouldn't pop up a whole lot, maybe. But if this card is also in the graveyard, if a monster you control will be destroyed by battle, you can banish this card instead. So it does have a graveyard effect that comes in handy. And it's searchable, so that's the good thing. Um, we play one Jack Frost. You could bump this up to three if you wanted to. Jack Frost is a great card. I think I just have one and I was like fine with one. But uh, Jack Frost is one of my favorite cards. Uh, shout out to Zach Norfolk, uh, one of my buddies. That dude introduced me to this card, and he runs Jack Frost in like a lot of his decks, because why the hell not? Jack Frost is absolutely just a great card. It says that uh, it can't be normal summoned or set, but basically what you do is if your opponent declares a direct attack, you can just activate this effect, book your opponent's monster face down, and then you just get to special summon this card face down. A lot of people are not prepared for that. They're not prepared for a Jack Frost to just come out of nowhere. It ruins their day, and look how happy this guy is. He's having a great time. Jack Frost is a great card. Uh, one DD Crow. I like this card at one. It is searchable. I'll show you how to search it, but DD Crow, just a good hand trap. Level one monster. The key thing is that it's a wing beast. That's important. But, uh, it just says during either player's turn, you can, uh, discard this card and then, like, take a card out of your opponent's graveyard, basically, and banish it. You could bump this up if you wanted to. I feel like we have a good amount of hand traps between this and the three Veilers. I don't really think, like, because you, you don't really want to summon this card. So I think one is fine because it's searchable. Okay, that's it for the monsters. The spells, triple where art thou, kind of like the support that the deck needs, like it helps. So where art thou kind of brings the deck together. What it does is uh, if you control a level one monster, you can play this and then search a le any level one monster you want from your deck to your hand. And then if you normal summon the monster you search or a monster with that name, you everything's fine. But if you don't normal summon the card you search after you play this card, then you'll take 2000 burn damage at the end phase. Um, Sometimes you don't care because like sometimes you'll just search a Valor and you don't really care about what the consequences are. Other times if you haven't normal summoned yet, it probably would be in the, your best interest to kind of like maybe search Piper or normal summon it and that way you get to get some draws and you don't take the burn damage. But wear off that great card, got to ride at three. Um, triple Pod Desires, now this is a 60 card deck. So the great thing about this deck, uh, unlike some other 60 card decks, none of these cards really individually matter that much. So if you, and you're running multiple copies of pretty much everything. So if you banish a, a copy here or there or two copies, so not the end of the world, not that big of a deal. Um, anyone who doesn't know what Pod Desires does, you banish 10 cards to the top of your deck face down, draw two cards, you can only play it once per turn, but it's great. 
I think any deck that you don't care about, like what you draw, nothing, no key piece is that important. I think you should run Pod Desires. Uh, but to the contrary of that, there's a lot of people that will push Pod Desires on decks and just say it's a great card regardless. It doesn't work for everything. Like, I ran into a dude that tried to play Pod Desires in Dark Magician, and I thought he was an idiot because if you banish Dark Magicians, it's game over. So, anyway. Um, triple Raid Raptor, or no, Rank Up Magic uh, Skip Force. This is a. Uh, a rank up card, that, and this is important because of some people know where I'm going with this deck. You have an ability to go into some monsters out of your extra deck that require rank up cards to be discarded. But this card has a double like kind of meaning of why it's in here because not only can you discard it to summon some cool shit, you can also activate this card because of that raid raptor card I showed you guys earlier that you know you can summon any raid raptor X Y Z from your extra deck with no materials. This card lets you target a raid raptor X Y Z and then summon out a different one with two levels higher than it. So it has a kind of a double uh, double focus of how you could use the card. So it comes in handy a lot. And that's a rank of card, so that's really good. And then our other rank of card we're playing is uh, the Phantom Knights rank of magic launch. So this card, obviously like the other ones, you can use it to summon some Utopia stuff by discarding a rank of card. But uh, the other thing it's used for is if you have that Raid Raptor card, the monster you come out with has no materials and all the Raid Raptors are dark. So this card it comes in handy a lot because if you, if this card says if you control a dark XYZ monster with no materials, you can play this card, attach this card's material, and then summon a new XYZ monster that's dark from your extra deck with one higher uh, rank. So uh, really good. Uh, I love this. I, I'm sure somebody out there is playing this. I don't know. I've never seen it with the level one deck, but I'm sure someone is. But that last tricks card kind of makes all this stuff possible. So um, I think that card should be a hollow, and it's not. It's just a common, but... Uh, so the last of the three of's, I play triple uh, pre-preparation pre of rights. So this card is just to search out the Relinquish and search out the Black Illusion Ritual that I play at two of. So you're playing two Black Illusion Ritual, two Relinquish. You're bound to see one of these before you see one of those. Um, I mean, if you don't, it's whatever. But And don't be too worried about like if you draw a Black Illusion Ritual or Relinquish without the other. It's not that big of a deal. You have pretty good draw power in this deck. So... Um, it's not, if you draw this card first, you're kind of in better hands because you can wear off foul and search relinquished. So, not that big of a deal. Um, okay, so last of the one ofs, I play one recurring nightmare. This card is just, a, the, when I showed you how many dark monsters have zero defense, this card just says select two dark monsters in your graveyard with zero defense, add them back to your hand. So that means you're talking just your confidence, maybe some relinquished, that probably won't happen for that, but battle faders and steel swarm sell. So, you got some good targets for that. And I, I was playing this at two, but I think one's fine. You, if you ever drew multiples, that's kind of why I didn't want to have it at two, but one is fine. And then lastly, one, one for one, because it's at one. Uh, one for one lets you go for any monster out of your deck. Usually you're going Piper here. Um, that's your best one because it doesn't matter if it's special summon or not. Now, the only other ones I can think of that you would want, maybe if you had the Relinquish play set up, you could maybe go into like Relinquaribo. Um... I think that's about it. I, uh, really, those are the main ones. It's basically just Mystic Piper. but um, So that's it for the main deck. And then the extra deck. Um, so one, Zexel. Utopic Zexel. So I used to kind of make a misstep, and I didn't correct it until recently. I needed to read this card more clearly. I knew what it does, and for anyone who doesn't, for every material that's on this card, it gains 1,000. And you summon it by having a Utopia monster out on the field and then discarding a rank-up card. The mistake I was making was I was discarding my rank-up magic uh, phantom launch. It actually, the, the card you discard has to be a normal spell card. So that won't work. So I, I don't get this card out as often as I used to because I was not realizing I was cheating, but I, I, you're not able to do that. So uh, you can only, in this deck, you can only discard the Raid Raptor rank-up card to summon it. But it basically what it does is during your opponent's turn, you can use it as a quick effect, detach, and then your opponent cannot play cards or effects for the rest of the turn, regardless of this card's on the field or not. And then he gains a thousand for each effect, so uh, for each uh, material. So he should have two thousand after you detached. But um, he's a great card. He locks out your opponent. He can literally be a win condition if you can get the rest of the stuff set up around it. He's not enough to kill your opponent. He's enough to lock him down. You got to create the other stuff to be able to kill your opponent. But I think he's essential as a one of. I don't really think you need to run more than that. Uh, I play two uh, number thirty nine Utopia Roots. So I got one ulti and one uh, rare, but roots, I'm playing two because you you get it, you need to play it more often than just one, but what he does is he just says, uh, when your opponent's monster declares an attack, you can like detach and just like negate the attack, and that's a one-time thing, 
uh, like that's all it's detached material to do it and I think you can only do it or you can do it as many times as you want in a turn but your opponent can just use that up um, and then if you negate an XYZ monster attack he'll gain like the monsters rank times like 500 or something like that usually your opponent's not dumb enough to do that but uh, he's a really good card but he's mainly used to go into your other big monsters like your Zexel or one of the other ones that I'll show here in a second um, we play two Leerless Crusidal Starling so this card's a rank one so it has a couple effects what it does is when you get it out you have to choose a monster uh, on the field and that monster gains 600 attack now you can use choose this card because it has zero or you can choose one of your own monsters like another one or an opponent's monster whatever you want uh, it has an effect that says once per turn you can detach material and search a level one wing beast from your deck to your hand so that means you can search raid raptor lastrix and the uh, dd crow so those are the two cards you can search off of that I was playing just one copy, but my buddy convinced me to bump it up to two because he said, you know, this card was like the best card in the extract, and I'm starting to agree with him. Its last effect says any battle damage you would take involving this card, your opponent also takes. That can be pretty pretty good if this thing has zero, and you can, like, your opponent just has a big monster. And you can literally, like, game him off of that, and it's kind of unfair, but this card's pretty good. Uh, okay, so now the rest of these, I think, are just going to be one-offs for the most part. So I got one Sylvan Princess Sprite as a rank one. This card you go into, uh, not as much as you would think, but it's not a bad one. You're mostly going into your Resize Starling or your Utopia play if you got a rank up play. But Princess Sprite just says uh, once per turn you can detach and then excavate the top card of your deck. If it's a spell or trap, add it to your hand. If not, the monster goes to the graveyard. That's all you're using it for because you don't run any plants in here. So you're just detaching and hoping you get a spell card and that's pretty much it. Um, the, by the way, the rank one pool is kind of light. I know some people like there's some other rank ones they like. I think the rest of them are pretty much trash in my opinion. Um, okay, so Raid Raptor uh, Fiend Eagle. This card is only here so you can summon Ophion. That's the only reason I have it in here is if you had the rank up uh, the Dark Phantom Night Launch card in your hand and you had the last tricks, you trip the last tricks, summon this guy, and go into Ophion. And the great thing about your deck is the only monster that Ophion would prevent you from getting out is your uh, BLS. And that's it. And for anyone who doesn't know, Ophion just says uh, when he's on the field, neither player can special summon level 5 or higher monsters. So. Uh, Ophion's pretty busted. I have a buddy. I mean, you already saw Chase's deck profile on the channel. He loves Evil Swarms. So, I mean, I think it's kind of fun that I can use Ophion as well. Um, okay, and then next we got Raid Raptor Revolution Falcon. This card is only here because of this card. Raid Raptor Satellite Cannon Falcon. So, if you have the Raid Raptor rank up card, you last tricks to summon this, and then use the rank up Raid Raptor card to summon Satellite Falcon. Satellite Falcon can blow up all spell and traps your opponent controls. And then your opponent cannot respond to that activation. So that's pretty good. So it's like it's really the only back row removal you have in the deck. And it has 3,000. I think it does something else. Uh, you can detach target a face of monster your opponent controls, lose 800 attack for each Raid Raptor monster in your graveyard. That's cool. But uh, the blow up effect is really what you're going to be using. Uh, so with this, you can summon True King of All Calamities. And it's actually pretty easy. You just need the Raid Raptor monster and the Phantom Knight card, the launch card. You just Raid Raptor, Last Trick, summon this, then use the rank up card and go into True King of All Calamities. Pretty busted. Uh, okay, so we do have another two of, and that's uh, Raid Raptor Ultimate Falcon. So I'll go into why you're playing this, but you can get him out the by himself. You can get him out uh, using the Raid Raptor rank up card, and you just have Satellite Cannon, and then you just use the Raid Raptor rank up card and go into Ultimate Falcon. And Ultimate Falcon says he's unaffected by your opponent's card effects. And then he has a few other effects. Like he can make all your opponent's monsters lose a thousand attack each end phase, that kind of stuff. And if they don't have any monsters, they lose a thousand. I think that's pretty much it. He just can't, he's unaffected by your opponent's card effects. And he's 3,500. It's pretty busted. Uh, I'll get to the other one, why we play the other one in a second. Um, you play number 99 Utopic Dragon. So you get this card out by having roots on the field and then discarding any rank up card you want. Unlike Zexel, this one doesn't matter what rank of card you discard, it doesn't care. But it's 4,000, and your opponent can't target it with card effects. If they try to, you can like negate it, and then like destroy their shit. I think maybe they can target it with spells or traps, but they can't target it with monster effects, which comes in handy a lot. And it's 4,000, and it's so easy to make. Um, so the last Ultimate Falcon, the main way you use this, and the fastest way you use this, is you trim your last trick, summon this thing, and then immediately you can just overlay it on top with 7 cents. Seven Cents just says it needs like a rank 10 or 11 Dark XYZ monster. Uh, I don't even know if it has to have like no materials or not, but you can just overlay on top of this. 
So think about it. Your last trick says if you tribute it, your opponent takes no more damage. Okay, that's cool. They take no more damage for this turn. But you have a 4,000 beat stick that has an effect that says if it would be destroyed by battle or card effect, you can just detach material. So you have a one-time prevention from being destroyed from a 4,000 guy that you got off of one card. That's ridiculous. Um, yeah, so that's it for my deck profile. Uh, I've been wanting to showcase this deck for a while. I really enjoy it. It's one of my favorite decks to use. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I think you'd be surprised. It's like, I think it's the only deck I run where I just focus on one level. I mean, I know some people have made like level four decks. I guess I have a rank four warrior deck, but I don't use that much. It's not that fun anymore. But this deck, like, I don't know, it just always seems to be fun to me. The whole Mystic Piper thing is just a blast. And you have hand traps so you can like, kind of slow the game down and control the game. But anyway, that's it for my deck profile. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, leave a comment, like, subscribe. Once again, sorry we took so long to re-upload content. I know it's been months since we've done anything. We're going to try to do more videos, uh, stuff like that. Maybe even show our faces. I know we've promised that before, but try to do some discussion videos. So anyway, uh, have a good 2019, guys. Thanks for checking out the video. Have a good one.